Steve now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower. It's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 526th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my late night once again co-host. Uh, we've got R Sigma. Hi. And once again, Lord Seth Vilo. It is me, two weeks in a row. Hello, yes, I'm here for the points. I'm here, yeah, yes, I am here <laughs> for trivia points. Uh, welcome for, to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League. A nonsensical name we came up with in 2007, uh, where we talk everything Pokemon from the trading card game to the video game to everything in between. I just realized that this episode comes out in 2022. We're recording it a, yep. a little bit early, obviously, guys. Spooky. I just realized that 2022 minus two, tw- 2007 is 15, which means this is like Ooh. 15 years. <laughs> I have realized it. Like, we made a big deal out of Puckle 10, and now it's just like, yeah, years happen now. <laughs> time, time is a construct. It's okay. Nintendo feels like 35s are worth celebrating for some reason. I, I don't get that one. That is true. Uh, the only good news about that is that we'll get Pokemon 35 for no reason. Ooh, I hope Ooh. we get a Pokemon game and watch. I got one of those for Christmas for Zelda. It's actually kind of cool. That looks really interesting, actually, the Game & Watch for Zelda. I saw the Mario one and thought about getting it, and then I saw the Zelda one, and the Zelda one's better, like 100% better. It is. It, it very much is. <laughs> because that one's got, like, OG Zelda, and then it also has Link's, uh, Link's Awakening, right? Link's Awakening and Zelda 2, I believe. Yes. No one cares about Zelda 2, but it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Uh, So, it yeah, Zelda 2 is the weird one. That one's, like, real weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to play once, with a guide. With a guide. I feel like you play it once because you're just like, I didn't know Zelda was a side scroller. And then you realize it's not. It shouldn't ever be. (laughs) (laughs) A guide in save states. Like, that's how you play Mm. Zelda 2. Yes, save states. That is true. That is true. Well, I I guess there's been like a holiday in between now and the last episode. So what have you guys been up to? Anything anything good? Anything anything interesting? Uh, I finished, almost finished collecting all the Pokemon in Diamond and Pearl. Fighting the uh, daily events to get them. Ooh. Pidgey took forever. Uh, Gulpin took forever. Heracross is awful. Um, but I got all three of them, like, in the past 24 hours. So, much happier. Heracross is hard. Isn't that, like, 1% on a honey tree or something? It's like... It's like a 5% on a rare tree encounter, which, like, if you find one of... Yeah, and a rare tree is already, like, dumb. Or There's four trees in your game that is a rare tree. And it has a 70% chance of taking from the rare table. So it's a pain in the butt to find. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> it's awful. The rare tree calculator. Oh, there's an RVDSP where they have a rare tree calculator for you. Oh my <laughs> gosh, it's not even like four known trees? Oh no, they're looking for one. Oh, uh, probably because the Feebas thing exists, which, thank goodness, that's wonderful. There is, no, there is a tree calculator. Ooh, Okay. There is a tree calculator. Uh, you you give your six digits uh, trainer ID, and it'll tell you. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it gives you uh, one. Of, it kills you four trees. Is it, is it only one of the four trees randomly each day? Uh, I don't think so. I think it can no. be any of the four trees. It's okay. just that they can still take from the common pool, so it's really hard okay. to kill on your end. Ugh. So like you just give in, you just give your trainer ID though. It's just based on your trainer ID. Apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know there's a Feebas one for, like, your lottery number of the day. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. here's, here's some squares you can find Feebas on. It's like, thank goodness I don't have to, like, grind for a Feebas. Apparently, it's just based on your trainer ID. I got the Heracross now. I'm happy. All I have left is an Electrike at some point, whenever that decides to spawn. But, hey, I can go <laughs> up, like, Kyogre now, so. <laughs> yeah, it's like a whole thing. It's like the same place where the Feebas calculator is. Fun oh, fact. Nice. Uh, fun fact. Actually... I think the star. I think the calculator is broken for mm. for BDSP <laughs> tree. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie. Yeah, I I wish worms were more like uh, the mansion Pokemon, where it's like goes in a cycle, and you don't have like three Spindas before you get a Pidgey. Mm. Yeah, that's not fun. That's no fun. What about you, Seth? Anything interesting or cool? I mean, 
like you mentioned that holiday, that was kind of a fun thing to throw in there. That was a good time. There was uh, there was <laughs> festivities to be had. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm still stuck. I have not yet beat BDSP because I made the silly decision to have a Clefairy on my team. <laughs> which, you know, evolves with a Moonstone. Do you know where oh, you get playing Moonstones? Diamond. Got it. Underground. Got it. No, yeah. not if you're playing Diamond. You don't find any. <laughs> really? <laughs> Almost. What, really? I haven't no. found any. Oh, no. Are you about to... No. So what, what I had to do for my Moonstones was I started a radar chain with, with Clefairy and had like a compound ice butterfree in the front oh. and just clicked Thief on them and got like five Moonstones in one go. Oh, no. It's really bad. They don't exist. It's so... That sounds super easy. Well, you don't get a radar until you post game. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everything. In- you gotta go find Cleffa and beat him up. I don't know. I still, I'm still bewildered by the fact that they were just like, yeah, Diamond and Pearl were obviously the best ways to play this generation. And even though we realized our mistakes and we fixed them later, we we're still not going to make those changes. Like, I, I would have been perfectly fine with the, like, the deck sucks, right? Like, the regional deck sucks. I do not like fighting. Cascoons and Silcoons with seven no. badges. They are not yes. a threat at two badges. No. Do not send them at me with seven badges. They did not <laughs> yes. change. They are still bad. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you had you had like Silcoon and Cascoon, and you have all that nonsense because well, one they made the decks really small, um, which is their fault. But like they mm-hmm. made platinum, and it made so many improvements, especially like pre post game stuff, because most of the Gen Four Pokemon are locked to post game, which is insane mm-hmm. to think about. And they fixed that with Platinum, which they should have just gone Platinum decks, but we keep the exclusives the same as we would have in Diamond and Pearl. And you can keep even the trainers the same, everything. Mm -hmm. But they literally made it impossible to, uh, or like actually play through with any of the good Pokemon. (laughs) Like, (laughs) it's just nonsensical because you can't get, you can't get a Moonstone. You can't get any of the stones. I mean, it's the same problem Gen 2 had. If you're playing Pearl, you can get Moonstones. Like, yeah. The stone exclusivity or near exclusivity. That was dumb. Is super dumb. I didn't know that that was a thing and I can't see that anywhere. I'm just learning this. Well, it, like, you get bonus rates. If you're playing yeah. diamond, you get more sunstones, firestones, and thunderstones. Yes. And oh, all, yeah, like, there it is. All six Pokemon, those evolve. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. Pearl gets leaf stones, water stones, and moon stones. Each of those have like four to five Pokemon to evolve. Uh, so it's like, oh. <laughs> well, I mean, I yep. found a leaf stone. So I, if I keep at it, I'll get there. <laughs> There's a couple in game, but like most of it's in the underground and it's yeah. It's, not great. Uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh wow, I have a bunch of stones that evolve two Pokemon lines. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah, it's not like ideal <sighs> at all. At least I can use my Thunderstone on my Magneton now. I guess that's yeah, cool. I guess. That's about it. But But yeah, that's what I've been doing is trying to find that stupid thing. Fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I envy you. Not at all. I feel like you don't, yeah. <laughs> I've actually been playing a lot of Gen 2 this week. <laughs> I'm so sorry. In, I, in different ways. Well, I, I just decided, so like, you know I'm doing that living decks through every generation thing, right? And what, oh, honestly, yeah. I, I'm a retro gamer that's getting all of his toys, especially like a, as a Pokemon retro gamer. It, it's a lot of fun because, you know, I've gone ahead, I've modded some Game Boy Color so that you can play on OG hardware. Mm-hmm. But then I, like more recently, I did like the Game Boy Advance uh, consoleizer kit thing. So I can oh, play yeah. on stream and everything. So it, I don't know. It's just like the experience is much different because I can play it in high quality on like modernish things. Mm-hmm. So like there's some novelty to that. But I, I don't know. I, I Gen 2 definitely sucks in its own way. I, I don't disagree with you, Seth. <laughs> I, I I would love it. to p- give us Gen 2 with an XP share. Like that's that's a game where it's Yeah, like, that's the oh. game that deserves it. That's a game that needs it. <laughs> that's a game that needs it. Otherwise, you have a team of three Pokemon. Uh, yes. <laughs> that game absolutely like no that's one game that doesn't get on balance with XP, xp share like uh yeah. like or as in bdsp did like it it's designed where only you can only use three pokemon anyway so xp share just makes it better yes like you can you can make it so i can't turn it off i'm not gonna complain it needed it <laughs> no it, no it will it would yeah. definitely benefit mostly because like i like i say all the time people are playing it wrong i think it, xp share would help people play it the way that people want to play it. <laughs> it it makes it a modern game it would make it a modern <laughs> game. Well, because the, the idea was to play it like Animal Crossing, which is what a lot of us did as kids, mm-hmm. where you go in and you do something daily and maybe you're not hitting the Elite Four yet because you've been you only get an hour a day to play your Game Boy, right? Because you're doing homework and all this other stuff. 
Mm-hmm. So you get your hour a day. You go do like bug catching contest, and because Johto is very easy to backtrack through. This is true because everything's like centralized on yeah. critique. Yeah, so. it's, it's designed. It's designed to be backtrackable because they want you to go do daily events. So it's a. Uh, it's designed to do that, and I. I think it's definitely lost on us now as adults, right? Because we just want to chew up a game and like spit it out. Mm-hmm. Like just finish the game, get it done. And so if you're backtracking a ton, you gain those levels anyway after a while, after all of your backtracking. Yeah. So I, I, I think that's just something that's lost on us because we want to, we don't want to play the Pokemon games in the same way. We want to be able to like chew them up and play them in 24 hours and be like, yeah, I won. I mean, it also worked as a kid because you were using your starter and maybe one other Pokemon. I don't know. I used a lot of Pokemon my original playthrough. I don't know. But like, I also just think about what I used to play because they made so mm-hmm. much stuff accessible before you went to Kanto minus Gen 2 Pokemon. Especially dark ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But <laughs> they made a, they made a lot of stuff accessible early on minus like Tyranitar, like the cool ones. And Sneasel. Uh, and yeah, Sneasel and Murkrow. Houndour. And Houndour. <laughs> The dark Pokemon, it's fine. But they made a, they got a lot of Pokemon early on before that that you could get. Like you could still get a Scizor pre Elite Four and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So I don't know. I spent a lot of time just doing that, and uh, a lot of my memories as a kid also are just because Pokemon used to be really good at post game content back in the day, mm-hmm. and we had these things called Pokemon Stadium One and Pokemon Stadium Two, which are just glorified post game content. Yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. And those, like that just expanded your Pokemon time by hours on its own. Uh, and Pokemon yeah. Stadium 2 particularly because like you can unlock like the extra Pokemon in the mini games and stuff. Got to get that Earthquake Gligar. Yeah. So I don't know. It's more of like this is definitely a nostalgia trip for me and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. That and we started the we, we started a new Pucko Plays Nuzlocke. So I started that with Whimsicott this week. So we have a few episodes ready to go. That sh- YouTube's coming back alive next week. People nice. should watch out or like the week this comes out, I guess. So people should look out for that. <laughs> YouTube's coming back. Coming back, baby. So definitely be on the lookout for uh, Thatch and Friends playing Pokemon Soul Silver. Heck yeah. yeah. But uh, this is a good place to stop. We could we could kick it on over to the news. There's some news to talk about, maybe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good laugh. So let's cue that epic music. <laughs> Radio Tower. This just in. And welcome to the news. In the news, we have very little because it's the week between Christmas and New Year's. So <laughs> nobody works. <laughs> uh, so the next batch of Master Journeys is going to release on January 21st and should end with the Volkner battle, which is kind of exciting. That, that is exciting. Uh, yeah. I, I love when they do like the little callbacks and journeys, actually. I think Iris and Dawn are in those episodes, too. So uh, I do like that when I do like when they have him go back and see older characters, though. I like old gym leaders showing up. That's fun. Yes, I, I like my favorite thing so far. I think like the best way they've represented it in like a this is definitely a new generation, but old generations will appreciate it was the uh, Vermilion City gym battle they did in Journeys mm. where it wasn't Lieutenant Surge, but it was Lieutenant Surge's like replacement because he was off training. <laughs> Yeah, and then Lieutenant Surge's replacements like, "Whoa, I know who you are," and <laughs> I I really like that. No, I, I like that's the kind of stuff I live for. I I enjoyed when Ash went and like interrupted the battle between Chuck and B. It's like, oh, that's cool. Yes, that's good too. I I really liked a lot of those callbacks, and they're doing a really good job with it because it's not overdone. Mm-hmm. Looking at you, Pokemon Legends, it's like uh, one in seven episodes or something like. Yeah, it's it's really nice where it's not. It's not like over the head nostalgia. It's like once a month, once every other month in Japan. And it's like, eh, that's good enough. And that's literally all I want. That's all I want the Pokemon anime to do is just like be like, yeah, we have a history and acknowledge that history and use it. Don't be the Simpsons, you know, where every episode is <laughs> different. Isn't there also isn't there also going to be I, I heard this somewhere like a four part episode with, about Legends Arceus or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's coming out in Japan only right away because obviously it takes time to translate. Right. It's also on Prime. Yeah. It yeah. Really- it's like a very weird release and because Pokemon doesn't know what it's doing with itself anymore. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, well, I, yeah. I think Pokemon... Well, the problem is it's all going to be in Japanese. So. Oh, yeah. They're not going to have subtitles, are they? That's what you're translating. Blech. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> 
I mean, you could watch it in Japanese and maybe get some like auto translations. <laughs> I know some of these words. I <laughs> exactly. It'll, it'll, they'll just end up like like the auto translations will just come out being nonsensical in places, especially with Pokemon <laughs> names. Yeah. Because auto translations with Pokemon names are horrible, as I can tell you from all the time Sigma and I look at Japanese teams. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you have to like decipher what words are because you don't know which Pokemon they're trying to counter and their explanations. And if you Google the word, it doesn't always come up as a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes their sometimes their Pokemon names is just words too. Like isn't like, Yeah, exactly. Thunder exactly. is Zapdos or Jolteon, one of the two, and it's just like that's just a word. One has an S at the end, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh all right. But that's Master Journeys. Yeah. Seth, take Ooh. us away with the exciting Pokemon Unite news that has dropped. You got it. There's tons of video game battling news, and uh it is that Blastoise, Greedent, and Slowbro all have tuxedo skins that are available. Yay, happy new year. Isn't Metronome Battle next week? I think it's two weeks. I don't remember. Okay. Metronome Battle tournament's happening soon. It though. should have been 1v1. Uh, I think it's going to be kind of a mess at 3v3. Oh, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be horrible. Get your dust clops ready. Yeah, they let two pressure mons in. Like, it's dumb. All right. Well, Pokemon Go news, Sigma. All right. <laughs> Tell Ooh. us all of the thing. Yeah, okay, so last week we had something about Mega Steelix Energy being in the research breakthroughs when you do seven researches in a week. Uh, I guess there was a problem. They moved it to a separate research that starts in January. Cool. <laughs> Yay. I, I like getting Mega Energy from not doing Mega Battles. But I'm okay with this. <laughs> I'm okay with either way they do it. That's fine. Um <laughs> Then we have the New Year's event should be starting by the time this goes live. Whether it's ended, I also don't know, but... <laughs> Nobody knows. Uh, Shiny Hoot's getting released. I don't know how that wasn't released already. So, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it also has a little uh, top hat and bow if you catch it. So, that's cute. I just... Whenever they release Shinies in Pokemon Go, I just go, meh. Because, yeah. like, you can't control the Shiny chances, really. Mm -hmm. And... On top, so unless you just like obsessively catch like a bajillion Pokemon, <laughs> and uh, so like you can't control the shiny chance, and even then, like it's not that exciting of a rollout. <laughs> I like shiny hunting on legendaries, and I like shiny hunting on community day, and outside of that, I don't because both of those have boosted odds, exactly. Yeah, uh, regular shiny hunting, it's like, oh, it happened, cool, okay, I, yeah, I wasn't going for it. I always see Joe Merrick's tweets where he's like, oh, good morning, and he's like, found a shiny in Pokemon Go, and I'm just like, you're playing this too much. <laughs> it's not worth shiny hunting. <laughs> no. Also, there's a Slowking with 2022 glasses and a Slowbro with 2021 glasses. I don't remember if it had the 2021 glasses last year. I think Slowpoke had 2020, and then Slowbro was 2021, and then now Slowking's 2022, and I'm... Yeah. FYI, this event goes until January 4th, so on the day this comes out, you have one day. Okay. Oh! Yeah, I remember it, it not lasting long. <laughs> it goes till do 20 o'clock local time, so you have that long on January 4th. Well, we do we do have a little bit of Puckle news. We're updating the Patreon for 2022. It's weird to right. say. There's a lot of twos there. Um, and yeah, I'm glad we don't live in the 23rd century. I'm just going to throw that out there. Uh, but... So 2022 is out, is coming, and we're going to update some Patreon stuff. Uh, one, the bot worked really well when we did, like, the advent calendar catch-up thing, so I think we're going to start giving away the full Ooh. Poke of the Episode team each week Ooh. to the $10 tier on Patreon. So you, you get, like, 24 months a month instead of just four. Neat. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's going to be a BDSP bot as well for uh, for $15 tiers. Uh, we got that working. I was kind of just waiting for it to stabilize because every update that BDSP was getting was breaking <laughs> it. Yeah, and that's still got a lot of updates coming, so... <laughs> yeah, so it might be down a little bit, but it, it had, like, a lot of updates in December that broke. It broke, like, three or four times in December. <laughs> Definitely take a look at that. Um, and then, uh, additionally, we're letting patrons pick uh, topics now. Um, at once a month, not every episode. But you guys can suggest a topic at the beginning of the month, and then uh, me and the co-hosts are going to, like, kind of craft, like, the best three. We might workshop them a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and let you guys vote on them for the next episode that we'll record through the month. And then you can go ahead. Uh, and if you win, like, we'll give you, we'll come up with, like, a special roll with a special color of some sort. The Rouge Rotom. <laughs> red Rotom Society. It's fine. I like Red Rotom better, okay? <laughs> red Rotom, the burger chain, okay? 
is shockingly good. It's the it's the newest product that Puckle has made up out of fictional air. Uh, on on top of that, I think we're gonna I'm gonna start at least doing like a weekly blog. I kind of want to try to vlog, but we'll see how that goes. Probably like minor vlogs for like, hey, this is Thatch making an episode of Puckle. You can watch this sped up twenty times because mm-hmm. it's just me talking <laughs> in a microphone. <laughs> Uh, we might do something like that uh, once a week or something like that. Everybody gets access to that. And I think at the $5, I added something at the $5 tier. Oh, Packle's coming back. We we dropped the ball on Packle, but that <laughs> is coming back. So definitely, definitely keep an eye out on that. And you get early access to the YouTube videos. We got a lot of YouTube videos coming your way. And what is Packle again, just for reminding? Packle is the Puckle Anime Club where uh, myself, Shamu, and probably somebody else will sit down and watch a few episodes of the anime. Well, we'll watch an episode of the anime, and you can watch along with our commentary. That way you can watch your children's anime show, but with uh, myself and Shamu making jokes about it. And then at the end of, like, X number of episodes, we haven't figured out what's comfortable yet. We do, like, a nice roundup and talk about what we liked about it and what we didn't like. Uh, and currently we're doing Pokemon Journeys. But there's there's going to be at least three of those a month for you at the $5 tier. Uh, at least three. I haven't decided if it's going to be four, but maybe three. So uh, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover there. But yeah, Patreon's getting an update. Remember, it's going to be a good time. On that note, though, we are going to go ahead and we are going to kick it on over to Puckle's Pokey Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. Oh, hi, and welcome to the Pokey Quiz, the part of the show where we quiz our co-hosts on their insane Pokemon knowledge. I'm Mark, here to explain the rules. Our fabulous co-hosts will work as a team to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions that fans have submitted on the Discord server. Each question is worth one point, with Pokedex and multiple answer questions worth more, for a total of seven points. The host can use a free hint at any time. If they get all the answers correct and do not use the hint, they can cash it in for an eighth point. And thank you for that introduction. We are going to go ahead and jump right on in to our questions. We're going to get our first question today from... I changed the tab. From <laughs> Rapture. And Rapture says, In which generation can you find the shortest and longest Pokemon cry? The shortest I read and... this before I asked it, but I didn't. Is that like you can find them both in the same generation, or yes. are we at, is that a two-part question? In the same question? generation. In the same generation. Uh-huh. Uh, both the longest and the shortest Pokemon tra- cry are in the same generation. I'm assuming introduced in the same generation, not uh, like yes. can be heard uh, at the yes. same time. In no, 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 okay. sa- no, 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 no. Like these are two different Pokemon cries, and the time it takes for them to play is both the shortest and the longest of every Pokemon cry ever. So I. And they are Pokemon introduced in that generation. They're in the same generation. Yes. Got it. They're in the same okay. generation. Yes. We've got the parameters of the question. Uh, so I have... Jinx's is really long. I don't know if that's the longest, though. Uh, huh. I don't... Uh, I can't think of length. Really. Yeah, I, I that's don't. That's difficult. I feel like some legendary has a weirdly I long like cry. I feel like that's probably true. I just don't know which one. Uh, <laughs> or which gen it would be. Wait, there is something else... Uh, something sticking in my head. Some ice type is weird that has a long cry, I think. That's other than yeah. Jinx, later on ice type. Why is that What's sticking in my head? Um, like, Sentrits is really short. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess ah, maybe it's as long. I'm gonna just ask you for an answer so you just don't go, ah, the whole this time. This is just a one in eight chance, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yep. What are you comfortable with, Sigma? Any, any I thoughts? I feel like it might be earlier. I have no clue. Wanna say Gen sure. 2? Why not Gen that 1? Seems you said safe. Jinx, though. Fine, Gen 1. <laughs> Gen 1's correct. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Gen 1's <laughs> correct, because Jinx does have the longest Pokemon cry of all Pokemon. Does it really? It goes yeah. on forever. Uh, the, shortest one is, the shortest one is Pidgey. Oh, yeah. Pidgey has the shortest cry, and Jinx has the longest. I wasn't sure if maybe it was like okay. a trick thing where, like, Eevee's uh, new updated Let's Go is the shortest or something. Mm, where it just goes no. boy, and then that's that's the cry. No, uh, Eevee's is like super short, or not Eevee's. Uh, Pidgey's Pidgey's is just like yeah. Chirp. It's just and then Jinx is Jinx is like burner. Jinx is a song. Like it's a serenade. Yeah. So there we go. I hope somebody clips that. Beautiful. Yeah, that was that was my ringtone impression. Yeah. 
Could you imagine? I got a text. Uh, <laughs> all right. This one is, this is another general trivia question. And it's going to come to you from Farmer Fox. Which Pokemon line has both the damp ability and the dry skin ability? Hmm. Damp and dry skin? I feel mm -hmm. like it's the Parasect line. You're right. Uh, I think you're right. The other is Effect Spore. Sure. I feel like that's right. Yeah. Yeah, well, let's are go you, with it. You, sure. Okay. Parasect is correct. Whoa! Uh, Parasect has both the damp and the dry skin ability, as well as the effects for ability. It needed dry skin so that it could be weaker to fire. Yes, but it is immune to one of its and get some fun, gas. some fun mathematical calculations when you do yeah. a minus six Paris in the yes. sun against a V create Rayquaza, <laughs> or Victini would probably. Be I feel better. like whatever. Line might have taken that's some fun, but it's fine. Well, no, no, because Victini has what base one hundred base stats, yeah. right? Um, yeah. So, like, but if no you do stat. make a Rayquaza, well, we're... yeah, but if you do make a Rayquaza, the attack stats definitely higher than one fifty. But Blacephalon has stats. But does it? I think it's Blacephalon now. Oh, Blacephalon yeah. has stat. Mm, yeah, it doesn't and matter. It has, it has just mind, mind blown. Attack, That's which is all. And you do like, and you do like a Z move on top of that. There you go. Yeah. Done. Okay. That's some fun so, stuff, though. This next question is your Pokedex entry question, as always. And so this first one is going to come to you, or this only one is going to come to you from G McP. <laughs> it's Pokemon Sword Entry Reads. If this Pokemon sticky saliva gets on you and you don't clean it off, an intense itch will set in. The itch won't go away either. Who's that Pokemon? You? Um. I have no clue. Is that a bug? It's Shield? Sword. But yeah, Close same enough, difference. Huh? Shield or it, it's uh, Shield and Sword. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, is it like sticky saliva and itchy? Is it swear? No, it wouldn't be swear licks. Uh, yeah, that would just be like sticky and gross. Um, that was my first thought, though. I had the same thought as you did. Oh, goodness. Is it a bug? Lickitung's not in there, is Lickitung it? Lickitung wouldn't would be really... there, but I don't think that's it. That doesn't fit it. Ugh. Dang it, you gotta I give my me perfect an score. See if you lose lose the perfect score here. Yeah. Ugh. What was your what I was your know. thing? I think it would Sigma, be you said a bug, bug a minute ago. I don't know what kind of bug though. Uh I agree. I don't really know which ones have saliva. I feel like we could we should probably just get the second entry. Give yeah, me an answer. I'm, See get a chance. You get a chance though. That's okay. Uh give me any Pokemon. Any Pokemon. You said a couple names, just give me one of those. L uh, lick a tongue. Lickitung is correct. Ow. What? Uh, <laughs> you got two points what? there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's uh, the the second entry was from Pokemon Emerald, and it says whenever it sees something unfamiliar, it always licks the object because it memorizes things by texture and taste. Okay. It's yeah, somewhat got it by sour that things. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it does make you itchy though when you get licked by it. So now dude. I think of that poor guy in the P P Detective Pikachu scene. Poor Team Rocket. Blech. Oh, that yes. too. Yes, Hydrocortisone is your friend. That's two points though. So you guys are four for three. Nice. Doing, we doing may real make it here. Yeah. All right. Your next question is worth up to uh, I believe two points. Then yes, because you're 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 doing you're doing so well. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want an anime question or do you want a question about berries? No, oh, no. I feel like berries is probably safer because I want to keep the score. Probably. probably. <laughs> okay, you're going to need a perfect score on this. Uh, so this is from uh, Liger. Uh, there are ten answers. Uh, for every five you give me, you'll get a point. Oh, this was a mistake. <laughs> there are 68 berries in the main series game as of Gen 8, but you, can you name all ten berries that originally appeared in Gold, Silver, and Crystal? Oh, Poison Cure and Freeze Cure and Gold Berry. And Berry? Oh, you get two strikes. Just make sure you lock them all in. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that you get three strikes and then you're okay. out. Uh, so I know. I'm pretty so, sure goldberry uh, is one and berry is one, right? Yeah. So those are both correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, then there's PZN Cureberry, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is that is the third. The, the aptly named. <laughs> I wonder what it does. Pism. Pism. Uh, are the rest named uh, like that too? First, I feel uh, like is they it are. FRZ Cureberry or something? <laughs> oh, 
you need to lock these in when you do it. But yeah, but yeah let me know. Uh, so you did. You did. Dude. I have berry, gold berry, and prison cure Pism. berry from you guys. Uh, <laughs> I think freeze cure, free first, first, first cure, cure berry. Uh, is that also is also one. That is incorrect. Oh, oh that is no, that's first strike. I've led us astray. <laughs> oh. Uh, there are seven oh berries no. you were missing. Oh no, <laughs> it's a lot of berries. <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, is there a you paralysis one? That, that you are correct that there are there are uh, other ones that will cure the rest of the conditions, but uh, <laughs> but what their name right. is that's the problem. But what they yeah, are, that's what you need to do. And like you're asked for the names, I can't give you the it's names. Not, okay, it's not it's not first cure berry. It's uh, you're going to be pissed off by the name of it, but it's fine. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's strawberry, but thawberry. No, no, no. Oh, that'd <laughs> no, be a good I, that's name. not. They should have done that. Would have been a good name. <laughs> I feel like there's that... a YouTube video. Thawberry. I thawberry. No, it. No, it's something. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting off track. Um. So poison. Yeah, prison cure. Prison. Pa- prison cure. Would it be park cure? Uh, uh, par- park your berry. Like for paralysis. I don't. I don't. I don't I think that's no right. <laughs> Those are the para parachute bear, paracure berry. Um, man, Gen two is awful. For paralysis uh, in Gen one and two. P isn't it like PRZ? Pers Pers cure berry. <sighs> yeah, gosh, that is correct. That is number four. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! None of them have uh, any of that anymore. I will give you that hint for free. Oh, no. B R N cure no, berry burn the, cure berry. I don't the know. Cure no. are gone. None of them are like that. None of them are like that anymore. No, none of them are like that. None of them are like that anymore. Oh no! Uh, you do have the hint heal. you can use. Uh, feel, feel uh, like yeah, we probably do. Uh, okay, let me try to give you hints here. <laughs> How do you uh, give us try. a hint without telling us? <laughs> I know. Uh, so there is one that cures freeze. The one that cures freeze um, is like a is like if you accidentally overcooked a berry. Um, uh, the, the one that cures the burn so it's a burnt is very berry. cold. Uh, burnt berry is correct. That's five. Uh, oh, I can okay. See one point. Yeah. Uh, the one that cures the burn is very cold. There's one that cur- cures confusion, and it's a. Uh, they also have foods like this in Pokemon that make your Pokemon lose friendship. Oh. Uh, and then you've the one that cures sleep. Uh, for some reason, is the flavor of toothpaste. Mint berry. Uh, yeah. yeah. Eh, that is six. Uh, uh, and then the other two, uh, this one is the Lepaberry equivalent uh, back in the day, um, but nobody knows what it would do based on the name. Mystery uh, Berry? Because, it's a, because it is a blank. What did you Mystery call it? Mystery Berry? That is correct. That's six. Uh, wow. Okay. Or, or is that... I think that... Or, no, seven. that I think seven. that was seven. seven. Yeah, yeah. And the other one is... Uh, uh, the other one is like a lumberry, but, uh, um, they would be like, Jesus did this, you know? Hmm. Miracle berry? Resurrection berry. No. The what? Miracle? Mickle berry. Mickle no, berry. Mickle's a real no. berry. Miracle no. berry. Miracle berry is correct. Uh, that's eight. So there's two. You just haven't gotten the one that cures burn. The burn and, and one confusion, confusion one. Yes. Confusion so burn is eight. a very cold thing. Yes. Confusion is a food. Uh, yeah, like a food. Uh, well, it's like a food in Pokemon, uh, in earlier Pokemon games that if you, like, gave these budget items to the Pokemon to revive them or heal them, they would decrease their friendship. Sounds like herbs to me. Um. Yeah, I don't remember an herb berry, but. But they would have a particular flavor. Oh, bitter berry. Bitter berry. That's nine. Hey. So the one that cures bird. A cold thing. Yeah. Ice berry? Sure. That is correct. That is 10. Uh, wow. Okay. <laughs> the ice berry <laughs> cures the burn. All right. So that's all 10. Yeah. Uh, the prison cure berry, the purse cure berry, the burnt berry, the ice berry, the bitter berry, the mint berry, the miracle berry, the mystery berry, the berry, and the gold berry. <laughs> wow. That was that the was... original 10. The OG <laughs> That 10. was a chore. <laughs> that was, yeah, you asked for that one. I uh, know. You could, have, you could have had an anime-ish related question. Um, I feel like I would have gotten that one just flat out wrong. Uh, I don't know if you watched Ultra Ultra Sun and Moon anime. Mm, not really, no. It. Okay, well, what was it like? The... What's the Pokemon made of light that they face off against? No, um, what was, are the Pokemon? Uh, well, they're no, I'm not going to do it to waste to waste it. <laughs> <laughs> Pokemon are yeah, the, don't all use it up. the Ultra Squad. It's like 
That was actually the question. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. That one's not bad. <laughs> right. um, it was followed by Go Go Pokey Rangers. Um, all right. So that is, I believe, you are six for four. You can get uh, one more point here and get a solid seven if you get this space Whoa. deck question correct. One of these you would just get, so I have to use the other one. Uh, this is from <laughs> The Purple Knight. What Pokemon that evolved from friendship has the highest base special attack? Hmm. And evolved from friendship? Yes. they. If you love them enough, they'll evolve. Or they've evolved because you love them enough. Uh, hmm. Special attack. What's Lucario's again? It's like a middling 190, something like that. Like, probably. It's like one the special attack that was higher than the attack. Like 110, 115 is, yeah, I think, the difference there. Yeah, it's not that high, though. Uh like is Togekiss um, is higher? Yes. Yeah, that's like 120. Well, Togekiss doesn't evolve through happiness, so it doesn't matter. Togetic is garbage. That's true. <laughs> uh Sylveon is 110 because that technically evolves through happiness now. No, that's true. That's not up there because I think Lucario beats it at 115. Uh but is Espeon higher? Yeah. Uh, no, Espeon's Yeah, wait, are both 130. 30. No, no Sylveon's special defense is the speed. higher one. Oh, okay. Yeah, they swap them. So Espeon's pretty high. 110 speed, 130 is our current winner with Espeon. Um, <clears throat> none of the other evolutions top that because of how the evolutions work. Is there a legendary that evolves through happiness nowadays? There's only one legendary that evolves through happy that evolves full There's stop. Like three, but beside the point. Uh, Are there? There's Poipol. Yes. There's uh. Kung oh, Fu that and kind Poipole's of counts. not a legendary. Get your head out. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Poipol's a starter. They've uh, kind of said they are. I don't know. <laughs> Poipol's a starter. Did you say Poipol's a starter? Is that what you said? Yes. <laughs> uh, Even though that wouldn't beat us beyond. I need an answer. Um, I mean, I'm fine with Espeon. I can't think of really anything uh, else. I'm... 130 is really high. Yeah, I'm I'm game. Let's do it. Espeon. Espeon is correct. Espeon has a base of 130. Uh, you named almost every single follow-up. Uh, so the follow-up nice. behind this, if this question's ever asked to you on the street, um, is Frostmoth at 125, Lucario at 115, what? Sylveon as a swish uh, with 110, Chimico and Silvalli follow that up with 95. That's not very high. Oh. What? <laughs> I mean, we put a lot of conditions I, on it, okay? <laughs> I forgot Frozmoth evolves with friendship. I did too. I, that, it's, that never it's clicked. It's a night friendship yeah, evolution, It's like a nighttime, nighttime friendship evolution thing. I didn't realize it had a special attack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's because it's got 60 speed and nobody cares. I know. I saw its stat spread and it, I immediately didn't care about its existence. It's a cute special yeah. wall sometimes. Uh, that's its, it's its job. It is bad. It is bad. Uh, but yeah, that it gives you a total of seven, which does change up our point standings, Woo. because that's how that works. Because <laughs> only three people have played trivia so uh, far. Because, yeah, well, we got four point four people on the board, because you get it if you help the person cross the finish line. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so in first place, we have Seth Vila with 14. Heck yeah. In second Woo. place, we have Claude, nine with eight. And tied for third, we have Lydian and our Sigma with seven. Everybody else has yet to get on the board. Tune in next week for some more Puckles Pokey Quiz. Until then, we're going to kick it on over to the topic. Hey, would you like a green Tauros badge? Well, you can have one. If you come over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Puckle Podcast, we are going to be giving them out once we hit $850. We're going to be giving those to every patron at the $10 plus tier because uh, we love you guys. We'd love to see this project project made. Of course, if we hit any other thresholds on the way there, such as $800 for the week-long giveaways to the community, that would also happen as well. So if you'd be interested in getting a green Taurus badge, be f feel free. Come on over. Uh, if you can't support the show, don't worry about it. You just listening is enough for us. So until then, though, guys, I'm Thatch, and I'll catch you guys on the flip-flop. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be a Pokemon 2021 report card. I like report card. That's going to be a snazzy title. Report thing. card. <laughs> we, no, we, well, we've got, we've got one, two, three, four, five sections. We've got five sections. And yeah. we're going to discuss each of them. And I think at the end, we give each of them a grade. Yeah. And I think, I think, we, I I like think that's it. entirely reasonable. And then we do an overall grade at the end. And 
Yeah, we can give him a solid. We can give him a solid grade, and that we've decided we've come up with a new series, so it's very easy for us to come up with topics at the end of every year. Okay, <laughs> and it's super easy for emails. So, uh, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> All right, well, let's get into it then. Our first topic is going to be just Pokemon Twenty Five, the uh, celebration that I guess happened this year. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. I don't know. Like, I, I remember Pokemon 20 when that happened in 2016 and how much more mm-hmm. hype that was. And I think part of that was just because they were coming out with a new game at the same time. A new game, by the way, that they did a better job at marketing than something like Switch. And I would even say BDSP to mm-hmm. a lesser extent, just because BDSP got announced and there was like six months of silence. This is coming. Yay. Yeah. And it was like, just it was just like, hey, this is going to happen. And then six months later, it was just like, hey, by the way. It happened. Here's the game, and Cynthia's in it. Please patch it day one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's not get. Let's not talk about BDSP yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know, but like, I feel like Pokemon 25 compared to Pokemon 20 was just like way more lackluster. And I, I would argue that's more probably because Pokemon 20 was the first time they ever did something, and I think they knocked it out of the park with Pokemon 20, and like they did the mm-hmm. right amount of nostalgia and worship. I don't know. Maybe COVID was part of the problem, too, because some of it feels very rushed yeah. out. Like they, yeah. they tried to emulate Pokemon 20 and they didn't hit the mark there. Like we have Pokemon Evolutions, right? In Pokemon mm. 25, which I guess are nicer in a way because they are longer than the Pokemon Generations episodes we got in Pokemon 20. But hey. But Trace is in it. Like some of them were good and others were just, they felt yeah. like a compilation and it's like, I, I don't. Yeah. Well, I. I don't think they were as much of a celebration yeah. of the series because if you look at Generations, and feel free to disagree with me on this, like Generations, they had a lot of really, really cool things happening. Like they, they were just exploring things that happened in each game and making a little anime short about them. And this one, mm-hmm. it, did, it felt like they were basing episodes on the game more so. I think my favorite Fair. was probably the gold and silver one because mm-hmm. it didn't really care what was happening. It was its own story and it was really well done. That's that's fair. That's fair. It's just a kimono girl show and it was really good. <laughs> you saw the background. It's like, oh, yeah, we did this shadowy thing with a Firo. Like we made a Firo mm. cry. And it's like, that's really cool. And I thought maybe the Kanto one was OK. I, I don't like Trace. I will never like Trace. <laughs> <laughs> he's an awful rival and the fact that they put him in there made me really sad actually it's like it would have been a really cool thing if she wasn't chasing trace through the entire thing i loved yeah. at the end where he's talking to professor willow about meltan that's kind of cool mm-hmm. but like the flashes of blue sitting in the uh gym that's really cool but yeah <laughs> yeah the other episodes the only one i remember is leon's uh ptsd from fighting eternatus which is cool. Yes. I mean, that was interesting. No, it's it's like I said. Those were like these are stories that were based on the game, and not just animating the game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I, it just doesn't feel as much of a celebration at that point as it does just like, hey, we're trying to make something new. Which I I guess I'm sounding awful right now in, in framing it that way <laughs> because it's just like, yeah, I really want Pokemon to be uh, the same old thing every time. Don't make anything new. Like the Gen 5, the Gen 4 one was okay too, because it was Barry trying to live up to his dad's expectations or something like that, yeah. that he set for himself. But like I, the N one, the most iconic scene of N in my, or one of them is the Ferris wheel. And I don't think that even made it in. So what were you going to say, Seth? Go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I need to probably watch these. <laughs> I haven't watched any of them. Generations was a lot better in my opinion, but I, they, these works. are different. Like it. I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of like a mix between Generations and uh, the Twilight Wing stuff we got. Kind of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of what it reminds me of story-wise. The direction reminds me a lot of Twilight Wings. Yeah. So let's move on to some other Pokemon 25 stuff. And these are very quick, obviously. Yeah. But uh, one was they like really hyped up this Pokemon 25 album. And it's a missed opportunity in, a, in the number one way. They did not put 25 tracks on it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And on top of that, I don't know, like, one, it was weird, the artists they did grab, and it was also very weird, the amount of, like, the way they tried to integrate it in. I don't know, like, that album yeah. was a, it just felt like a very hodgepodge thing they did. I was underwhelmed. I was hoping to be really excited for each thing, and it's like, yeah, oh, 
it's just a song and maybe there's a slight Pokemon motif in the back. It's like, oh. yes. Yeah. Oh, which is okay to some extent. Like I, I, so like the Katy Perry one, electric, I'm, I'm all for I like that one. Post Malone just did a, just did like Hootie and the Blowfish. A Hootie cover. and the Blowfish <laughs> cover. <laughs> with, with Ecrutique in the back. <sighs> I would have been okay. Even if like, we just had one where one of the artists just like sang the theme song from the anime. Mm-hmm. Like that would have yeah. been cool. Or Pikachu jukebox, like that would yeah. be fun. Could you imagine somebody doing the two perfect girls for me? That would have been amazing. <laughs> I would have loved that. From the heart of Jigglypuff. Oh. <laughs> I feel like with that, they also just kind of spaced it out over way too long. Right? Like a year is too long to do it, right? And they yeah. always launched at midnight, so I never cared. When they yeah, came out. and they, I, it wasn't always easy to find where it was. Like there was no album centrally. No, nope. had to kind of until know October what you were looking for until October, and then they did it until yeah. no one cared. They also had the weird Post Malone 3D virtual concert. Yeah, because mm-hmm. because COVID was still in its height. Yeah, and but it was like weird and didn't need to happen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it had the vibing Umbre on. <laughs> that's all I cared about. Didn't need to happen. It was very odd. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I I, th- I think COVID definitely played a part in a lot of these things. But at the same time, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's just like, you either do it well or you don't do it. Right? Mm-hmm. And I feel like the Pokemon 25 album was 100% a waste of their money. I feel like they sunk yeah. a lot of money into that. And I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know, know what, what they, they got, got out of back. it. I don't know what they got out of it. It, it was cards. very weird. Trading mm. one trading card for each one of the f- for four people, not even all of them, just four. No, no, three, three. No, and all they right. aren't even real. No, they're not. They're, well, there's one real one, one real one sent to each one of them. That's it. Ah, and then obviously they announced BDSP and uh, Arceus uh, this year as well to hype it up, which was just like, I, mean, I don't know, like it was kind of hype. I, I, I remember when BDSP was announced, I was just like, man, I hope they don't mess this up. That was my first thought. <laughs> I don't know. I, at this point, like the Hoenn confirmed thing, like legit was hype because people were wanting that for a very long time. And that was a game that needed the modern refresh. And BDSP, I think, to a lesser extent needed that. <laughs> like, I think it needed it to a greater extent because like the games play awfully on the regular hard. That, that's true. And that's true. Also, HMs are miserable. Yeah. I, I just feel like we're reaching this point in Pokemon games where it might just be better, especially if they're not going to update the DEXs or anything. To include new stuff. I think we just, I think they should just port it. After Diamond and Pearl, yes. Uh, Diamond and Pearl is the only game I don't think you can port because it plays just so miserably. Yeah, I just wish they, I just hope they port Gen 5. Like, I don't want to remake at this point. I just want to port because you're not going to add anything new. I am dreading it. I'm dreading the Gen 5 and I'm already seeing people getting hyped. I know. There's Twitter places that are already starting to see hype. Like, Pokemon Out of Context Unova is now a trending twitter thing and uh, it's, it's just gen 5 convert uh the problem with the gen 5 remake that might be coming is that well it's probably coming let's be honest uh the problem with the gen 5 remake is that gen 5 you can't just be like oh we release black and white remakes and we're good because gen 5 a very integral part of that is still the second half of the story in black and white 2 yeah how do you do that yeah, how do you do that games. well? And I think the honest answer is you just port them and you call it good. And then you're done. Like, that's all there is yeah. to it. Because they can't, you you can't really do those games. And then, like, especially if they try to do it the Gen 4 way. Because, like, Gen 4 at least had almost all of the Pokemon accessible. And so they fixed in, they filled in, like, the very minor gaps that were there. The legendaries and the... Uh, the so. legendaries and the starters yeah. and Tropius. Uh, <laughs> and and te- te- technically Tangela. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> They filled in those gaps very easily. And the problem is, I don't think you can do that that well in black a black and white remake. I mean, you could really easily because you're never going to make the uh, the online thing again. So you mm. just make the entry forest into, hey, this is where old stuff is. Maybe you do that. Yeah. Because yeah, well, because those are the only games in the franchise where you can't catch Pikachu. <laughs> like you can turn the entry forest into the underground and it doesn't. Yeah. Matter. I don't know. Yeah. I, I feel like that's such a cheap way to do it now. I I don't know. You can't even make Flash games anymore. Like Yeah, I don't know. It, it just feels very cheap because, like, not having Pokemon outside of, like, gen f- past Gen 4 in uh, BDSP 
I don't know. It kind of puts a downer on it to some extent because it'd be really cool to mm-hmm. battle like some of the trainers with like updated teams and stuff like that. No Sylveon for you. Yeah, Sylveon. Well, when they didn't do Sylveon, I'm like, oh, cool. That's nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Thanks, guys. So that's where we're going with this. But yeah, I don't know. So Pokemon 25, before we get too off topic, uh, what grade would we yeah. give the Pokemon 25 movement? That's what I'll call it. It's a movement. I think it's a solid a C, C minus maybe. C minus even. Yeah, C minus. It's not a failure, but it's nothing. It's definitely not as exciting. I would give Pokemon 20 like a solid like A, A minus. You know what? I'm going to go up to I'm going to go up to B minus. I have the cute little Pikachu plush. I want to throw this in here. Um, because I don't see it anywhere else. The celebration set from TCG with all the 25 stamp and the old cards that are redone. Okay, those are cool. The celebrations TCG is really cool, but the problem with the celebrations TCG is that it's TCG. And mm-hmm. TCG is just in a bad spot right now. Yeah, but that's something else that's 25. IRL that product, I, really I should say. Yeah. Like from a collector standpoint, TCG is bad. I think if you're competitive, it's not too bad, but we can talk about that. Not, well, I mean, yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there. Uh, all right. So video games, that's what we're going to talk about next. We already started talking about BDSP and some of the problems with that. So I don't want to go into that too much, but we did get other Pokemon games this year. We got a lot. Yeah, we got a lot, actually. Yeah. I was actually pretty. In, uh, and you know what? The other two that weren't BDSP were actually pretty decent. Agreed. They were. The other two were pretty decent. Like Poke- new Pokemon Snap was really good. And then with mm-hmm. the like yeah. freebie DLC that came out, even better. Oh yeah, it, it, it's a it's a great game that calls back. Yes, and you know what? You know what I like about that? They're just like, well, we can't. We we're only gonna make Pokemon Snap again if we do something different. And you know what? They didn't do anything different. So, <laughs> <laughs> why well, would I would argue that's not true? Well, what do you what do you mean? What do you mean by that, Seth? Go for it. Well, I mean like it's a lot. It's the same idea as a game, but the game itself is incredibly different from the original Snap. It's got new Pokemon. It's got the well, whole. Well, yeah, like- I wouldn't say new Pokemon is a new. So, like when so when Junichi Masudo used to be interviewed about it, he'd be like, "Well, we need to be able to do something new gameplay wise if we we're going to do it again." And I, I would argue oh. that the gameplay is not much different. Okay, yeah, I misunderstood, but honestly, it doesn't need to be different. It, no, it's just been twenty years. Okay, okay, so I think this is something that the Pokemon company just doesn't understand, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what everyone said for years. It's like we don't need it to be different. We just want a new one. Yes, I think I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, so Pokemon Snap was great. I think Pokemon Snap was very good. That's a great. It's a great game. I think everybody should buy it. I do think the sixty dollars price tag might be like a little much. Yeah, 40 uh, maybe. Like the Spyro remake. I mean, even 50 I would, I would say 50 I would say even 50 Like, it's $50 for Man. me. But, like, I, like I, I, 60 is a little much. I think 60 is a little high. But if you can get it on sale. Yeah, post-update, I think 50 is Yes. Fine. Post-update, absolutely. Uh, the other game that came out that we talk about a lot now is Pokemon Unite. Yeah. Pokemon League of Legends came out. Even though I'm bad, I like it. I like it a lot. I play it a lot. And uh, I mean, it is fun. It is. It is. It is fun really game. fun, despite all of the ethical concerns. And mm-hmm. it, it there is, are problems, uh, <laughs> but playing it is fun. There are problems. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why Ninetale skin costs the same amount as Pokemon Snap, but yeah, that's absurd. Yeah, I, I'm all for skins, but like, do they have to be the price of the game? If you're selling forty dollars skins, you should probably just have all the Pokemon playable for free. Right. 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 The Pokemon themselves, they cost, like, maybe, like, 5 or $10. And not have a cap on coins. Like, what the heck? Yeah, the cap on coins during the week is also kind of a bummer. But I understand why they did that, because it's actually a thing in China that they have to do. Oh. Where this game's, like, because oh, there's that's there's, just happened, there's legislation too, yeah. in China that says that says you need to make it you need to make it so you can de-incent- de-incentivize children from playing the game. Right. So that they're not playing it all the time. I mean, they also made all those crazy laws where kids can't play video games like past 9 p.m. or something. Yeah, I thought it's like one hour a day you're yeah. only allowed to play. So just turn those game. off everywhere else in the world. Come on. Yeah, they just tur- turn the coin cap off after the one hour that the children can play. <laughs> right. Stupid. Yeah, I don't, it's very weird. I mean, China finally got an updated version of that Pokemon block game or whatever it was. Yeah, well, they did that because, I don't know, the, they're trying to enter the market. Uh, Pokemon Quest, that's what it's called. Yeah, we haven't gotten an update here. They, they're they getting new Pokemon. To be fair, Pokemon Quest wasn't good. I mean, yeah. you're not wrong, but I'm surprised they're not trying to make money on it. No, they tried, okay, so they tried really hard to popularize Pokemon Quest in, in the West, though, because 
like if you look at clearance shelves everywhere, you find the Pokemon Quest figures <laughs> all over the place because they were just like, we're going to merchandise this and everybody's going to love it. And it just didn't happen. Like even even in like Pokemon Journeys, they make po- there's Pokemon Quest references like in the background. Mustard's playing in in the DLC for Sword and Yeah, too. they like really wanted Pokemon Quest to be a thing and it just isn't. <laughs> it just isn't. It's just not good. Uh, so BDSP, Arceus got announced video games because th- we've talked about BDSP and Arceus enough. So I I can give it like an A minus. I would call it an A. I would call it an A minus or B plus somewhere in that range. Agreed. I'll settle on A minus. That's fine. We got Snap. I can't be a mad. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to say it's perfect because BDSP launched and it had a load of issues. Yeah. Like outside of just like the programming issues they had, but also the issues that I don't know the game itself has in design. Yeah, because I wouldn't call a BDSP like the greatest game. Some somebody, I think it was Nintendo Life, was like really harsh on it and gave it like a six out of ten or whatever. Mm, which is fair. I'd yeah. probably give it a seven. I I think it's a very fair. I think it's a very fair score. Like I think six and a half seven is like a good BDSP score. Mm-hmm. We'll see when transfer comes and like. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, a a, a minus B plus here. The the way they're doing the Arceus announcements though is really cool in my opinion. Like like the oh, Voltorb yeah. the. The Zoroark line, that's really cool. So we just started getting Arceus announcements again, right, in, like, August, right? Yeah. But we all, you also have to remember Arceus is coming out, like, two and a half months later than we would normally see a Pokemon game. And so if you if you ran, run that back to J- June, this is about the right time, time spread they're doing. And mm-hmm. they're giving us monthly announcements. Yeah, they're doing good. Yeah. I think they learned from their Swish mistakes. <laughs> because, like, they try to do these, like, really hype events to, like, hype up, like, oh, what Pokemon's going to be revealed? And they made you watch a 24-hour live stream that you really like just to see a glimpse of a Galarian Ponyta at the end? Ugh. Yeah. Or that weird pixelated surfetch. That was weird, too. I thought that was cool. It's the same kind of style where it's it's weird ways to drop it that aren't normal, that are not the sun and moon. Here is Sylvalli, a Pokemon that there's only three of, and here's everything you need to know about it. And it was created by your enemies. I, so, like, there's definitely a balance. I agree with you that there's a balance that's required for Pokemon releases and announcements. Yeah. That wasn't struck. And I, I think I think Switch was too little. I think Sun and Moon was too much. And X and Y was closer to the middle, but probably still airing on the side of too much. Mm-hmm. There were, what, two Pokemon we didn't know when Sun Sun and Moon came? Yeah, out? it was like Araquanid and uh, Delmize or something. Like, Yeah, literally, literally less than five, I think. Yes. Yeah. Or yes. Pokemon we did not know about when when that you are came. absolutely correct. Way too much. The only thing that was interesting was Ultra Beast and Sun and Moon because we did not know how that was going to be handled. Yeah. Right. Like the leak came out and we saw a triangle Pokemon and we we're like, what the heck is this? Yes. So it, it's very interesting in that way. But yeah, I do agree with you. I think the Arceus announcements are being done very well. I I, I, I do it. agree with you. I mean, as long as they're not making me watch a twenty four hour live stream, I'm okay with it. Yeah. But the shadow drops are real cool. No, the shadow the drops are really cool. The thing was just slick. Yeah, that was great. Uh, so, yes, TCG. Let's do this very quickly. Uh, <laughs> As Seth breaks up. <laughs> well, I just don't... Well, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to, like, go on, like, a rant about how scalping's horrible. Right. And uh, <laughs> They're not helping. They are they not, are not helping. helping. There is there is another Charizard in the next set. At least one. There might be two. We don't know. Stop. The in- Stop. The NV star, so two. Oh yeah, no, there might be three. That's not really something they. I don't. I. I, I want to say they don't have a lot of control over it because it's just kind of popped off as something that people are using as currency. Uh, yeah, but you could, you could, you could control it to an extent by increasing the supply, and it's not like something Which like I think computer parts. To do. No, they have been doing a much better job of it. Like I got a hold of celebrations recently. Like that's yeah, they overprinted the crap out of that. No, They're they need to to devalue it. Just buy. devalue it. Please, just I just wish I could it. find them at my stores, like my my targets, my Walmart. Yeah. I want to get the actual things there. Okay, we're done. We're done. We're done. It. I don't want to go. I don't want to talk about how the world's awful. Uh. <laughs> the actual TCG itself, the actual TCG itself, I think is pretty good. Like after rotation, and it was V's only, uh, mm-hmm. no more GX's nonsense. It's been pretty healthy. It's been pretty good. The the whole like battle styles mechanic of single strike, rapid strike, and now fusion strike is a really cool thing they're adding to the game. And now they're dead, and it's okay. Eh. Yeah, I, I don't expect more. Well, we know oh, there's yeah, like one yeah. more, but 
yeah, more fusion support, and that's pretty much all I see happening. No, I don't future. even think there's that. Like, we haven't seen. Well, we have we seen? I don't know. I I think it's a one year mechanic, like they like to do all the time. I hate yeah, that. Which is I fine. hate that. <laughs> I think it's fine. So is the power creep bad? I haven't been following too bad too much. I just play the decks that you guys put together. <laughs> Everything's super centralized on Mew uh, right now. And it's not even... I would argue it's not centralized. It's just Mew is the best deck. But I mentioned this last week on the show where it doesn't... So I, I, I think I talked to you, I think I talked to you about this, Seth, in DMs because we, we talked about yeah. Mew briefly. Uh, so my question is, and I think I asked this and I just want you to answer it because it might be informative for other people. Is Mew V and it's VMAX, right? Is Mew VMAX that's like the problem? Correct. It's uh, is that as bad as ADP was when ADP was around? No, no. Okay, that's all that matters to me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, because ADP invalidated entire styles. Mew is just very good and consistent. That's the difference. But it's not getting more Pokemon, most likely. So it's okay. Yeah, maybe a couple. That's it. Yay! So, yeah. I mean, I don't uh, think it's healthy to have a deck that's focused on like eight Vs and three V maxes. But that's beside the point. Meh. I think it's in a really good spot right now uh, after Fusion Strike. I think it's real healthy. I like where they're going. I'm really excited for events next year, but this is 2021 interview. That's the thing that's bumming me out is that they still haven't got anything happening. Yeah, how did Players Cup go? Didn't you did you did you make it to Players Cup at all, Seth, this year? Because I know you're trying to do uh, things. No. Maybe Sigma did. I tried to qualify. Uh, it's it's a very boring process. I fair. Uh, hopefully, TCG Live fixes that because that yeah. was announced. That was announced and then delayed several times, and I don't understand why. Yeah. Yeah, I've done a couple of the Limitless tournaments, which were really fun. I've done one in-person event, which was really fun, and I did really well at. I'm excited for TCG Live. I'm excited for Salt Lake City, which is the first in-person event next year. So, I mean, it. I think it's in a good place, and I'm looking forward to where it goes. So I would give it, um, I would honestly give it an A. TCG? I think yeah. it's better because ADP ro- rotated that. I'll give it an A because ADP rotated. <laughs> Never saw a world championship. Ha. ha. TCG is in a great place compared to BGC. <laughs> so, That's yeah. so true, which is the next topic. Yay. People still play TCG. That's the difference. Y- you're not wrong. I think part of it is because there's no live events, but it's also that they kind of like blew their load on BGC already, kind of. Yeah. In that they were just like, yeah, we already did our GS Cup equivalent, you know, which is very, which they did very early. And I think part of that is they're not playing their cards right with the Pokemon releases. Like they have a really good format that they could be doing this with, where it's just like, hey, here's a slow, here's a slow drip feed for you, Thatch, of all those Pokemon you've been missing. Here, have Greninja right at the end, you know, just like, here's your injection. I mean, not that it matters in VGC. It doesn't matter in VGC, but. Like, nothing missing matters in VGC outside of Smear. Whoa, and Go Goat might matter, okay? Wow. I mean, if it got Grassy Glide and gave it the ability to make terrain itself, maybe it'll... Re- Actually, yeah, if it, if it got if it got Grassy Glide... If it were terrain, Rillaboom, it would be good. Well, yeah, if it were Rillaboom, it would be good, yes. <laughs> I think you could still do something with it. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I just like being able to mess around with all of them. Yeah, I feel... I feel real bad for VGC because they just kind of stopped after August, and it's like yeah. Well, know. they like they did the Dynamax, me- the no Dynamax meta, which was the first uptick because of a format change and not because of new Pokemon coming in mm-hmm. that they ever had in Swish. Because Dynamax is kind of boring after a while, honestly. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it's balanced. It's balanced. It's all heck in VGC. In yes. VGC. In VGC. Uh, e- I would even argue BSS. In, in, yeah. in Game Freak's official formats that they want you to play because they made their timer the right thing. Um, the, it is very balanced. You don't feel bad when they snowball to winning in a 3v3. Yes. That's you feel true. bad when they snowball in a 6v6. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a lot more sending things out just to die. Yes. I do think it's interesting, though. I, I, I talked to both of you about this, I know, when it happened, when they announced that they're not moving uh, to BDSP as their new competitive game. And they're staying on Switch. I wonder if that's because the competitive, like the Coliseum room was not available at launch. And that's, I don't know if it it was that particularly, I think, I think their plan and I, because TPCI's like grand plan is coming more and more into focus as we go on in time, because Switch was obviously like a turning point for their vision for what they're doing with Pokemon as a company, especially the video game side of things, because with Dexit and everything that happened. 
Mm-hmm. Arceus is a really good move because Arceus is just like, hey, here's a new game, but it's still a mainline game and you can transfer these Pokemon, blah, blah, blah. And I think to really seal that deal, they should move those Pokemon to Sword and Shield. Just saying. They should. Yeah. Or have a new game come out next year that is compatible with them. One yes. Of them yes. Basque Legion, if Basque Legion and Weird Deer can come to Swish in February, I think they have a very good argument. Give me Rockhead, Head Smash, Flare Blitz, Arcanine, please. Yes, I, I think that would be very interesting as well. I, I think they really they really should think about that, if they haven't already. It, because that would be another, that would be a good shakeup for VGC. Also, because they're actually finally going to London for Worlds. And I think nothing's no. stopping the train at this point, probably. It has for two years. I would not be surprised if something stops at year three. Uh, I think this time they might just require you to get vaccinated or something. They are for uh, TCG events. Yeah, so I think I think that's my, I that be might surprised. be what they do. I think that's, that's they're going to have worlds, and they're just like we've put this off long enough. But I think you want to yeah. see you want to see when you go to worlds, if you're a marketing person, what you want to see is you want to see somebody battling in the world championships with a weird ear, you know, <laughs> or something from Arceus, something new, maybe maybe like uh, Hisuian Hisuian uh, what's it called, uh, Zoroark or something might be good. Like, Normal Ghost is a cool type. I think it would be really interesting to see something like that. Uh, and even then, like, you, you could also... Well, I guess you're not going to see Gliscor in VGC. Uh, none, of the lo- none of the things yeah, in VDSP yeah. specifically. Like I said, outside of Smeargle. Like, they're, they're not. Uh, yeah, but Smeargle's not going to come in and do anything game-breaking anymore. Uh, outside of, like, Spore nonsense. Like, they nerfed him pretty hard. It's like, oh, you don't even get evasion boosts anymore, but Yeah. He's just okay. And it's he's fun. okay. Like, he's usable. He He's usable. He could do Smeargle things. I I don't know. It would be very cute to see some of the new Pokemon, though, from Sword and Shield, or not Sword and Shield, Legends Arceus come and be somewhat viable, which I think they could be. We don't know the base stats or anything, but I would would love for that to be the case. And we won't know the abilities until when or if they transfer to home. Yeah, well, they will transfer to home. We know they're going to go to home. Yeah. We don't, we know it, but we haven't heard confirmation that crap like weird ear and basque legion. No, no, they said that they will absolutely go to home. Like, if they're new Pokemon, they will go to home. Yeah, fair. They will go to home. It's whether or not you can get them out of home. That's the question, right? <laughs> That's, yeah, there it is. That's the question. The question is more, can you get them out of home? But if they go into home, they'll get abilities. They'll get everything, just like the Let's Go P- Pikachu and Eevee Pokemon. We'll have actual base stat data instead yes. of whatever they're doing in Arceus. Well, uh, so, well, from the leaks, leaks, and I'm going to put that in heavy quotes, it's more like a candy system in ours is, just like in Let's Go. Yeah. And that's yep. why we see these super inflated stats. Ha 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 ha! Inflated stats on a drift limb. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. It, yeah, VGC. If they, I I totally understand them keeping it in like a, having a hub game every generation. I just hope that they continuously update that hub game. And probably part of the issue is again COVID probably slowed that roll down because I honestly think BDSP probably was intended to be a 2020 title. And not a 2021 title. Maybe mid 2021, yeah. or even like, or even like mid 2021 title. And Arceus was supposed no. to be the 2021 20, holiday title. Maybe that's probably what it would have been. Yeah, I, I, I think that might have been the thing because, because if you think about it, because then you had Crown Tundra's latest update, and then it was less than a year before you got another update, another like injection of Pokemon. Yeah, and then anniversary is BDSP. November is Arceus. Yeah. Yeah, but then you do well. Then you do like BDS Pmons, and then you do a format where you just restrict it to BDS Pmons, right? Right. Uh, because that, I mean, that's a fun meta, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun meta. So I mean, you just do that. You just restrict it to BDS Pmons, and you let them do it in Sword and Shield, and everybody can kick and moan about it. But you for but it's it is what it is. Yeah, and it's not like most of those Pokemon weren't already available in Sword and Shield anyway. At least the good ones. Mm-hmm. So. You just go ahead and do and that. Everything else is breedable. Like, yeah, you have the legends already. Exactly. I think that I think honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what ends up happening in February to some extent or March or whenever they want to flip the meta and they just go like, I wouldn't be surprised if there's an update for Sword and Shield that gave the B- put the BDSP and Legends RCS mons in and then they went, hey, you can only use Pokemon from the Hisui decks or the Sinnoh decks or whatever it is. Mm hmm. Or before Gen 5 or something. Yeah. I don't know. Before Gen 5 and all the stuff that you can get in his his Sui, you know? I, I think that would be I think that would be interesting. Yeah. And that might be what they do. Because that would be a nice like fusion injection. But uh yeah. Grade like D? 
I yeah, it's been really bad in 2021. We're talking it's been like, real the future stale. the future meta that doesn't exist that Thatch would like would be a solid like A. But current current VGC is like dead. Yeah. I I would give it a D, maybe a D plus for like still hanging in there, bud. The no Dynamax meta came out in 2021, and so I'll give it a D plus for that. That that's yeah. uh, you know what? That's sure, fair. D plus. I like no Dynamax. I no Dynamax was fun. That. Or Banlist. Banlist was really cool too. Banlist was so much fun. Could you imagine the GS Cup format with Banlist so that you don't have Zacian? That would be amazing. And you don't have Incineroar. Yeah. Or the monkey. Get rid of... Uh, get rid oh, of- it would be amazing. I'm just saying. <laughs> it would be amazing. All right. So last thing to talk about is uh, Pokemon Go. They did do a couple new things this year. They did the, the new seasons model. I like it a lot. No, that's really good. That was a good change. That was good. They they started doing like the uh, the Go Tour, which they're going to repeat again in 2022. Mm-hmm. Uh, which was I, I wish I would have actually cared about it when it came out. I, I am bummed that I missed out and there's not a way to go back and get it, which kind of it was sucks. a really fun event. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this year's reward is because yeah. Shiny Mew was really cool. Uh, yeah. Shiny Celebi is not. So I want to no. know what it is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be Shiny Smeargle. Uh, ah, yay. Yeah. I think everything's out in Gen 2 now. So it was a great event. Yeah. And then apparently it's going to Worlds. So whatever that means. Yeah. Sure, um, it's a world's format now. Tap your phone really fast. Tap your phone. To be fair, like I kind of understand the strategy, but it's also not uh, like it. I don't like it for the reason I wouldn't have liked it if we did VGC in like Gen three, mm-hmm. where it's very hard to control the IVs and uh, of your Pokemon. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Competitive is not for me. Yes. For Go anyway. Go Go is just because like literally Go, you can't breed to get IVs, so you literally just have to catch a bunch of stuff and then hope you get a good IV Pokemon for that breed. Also, they usually push the Great Cup, which is like you don't want perfect IVs, you want low attack because mm-hmm. you can get to a higher number because attack inflates the number more. I don't mm-hmm. it's dumb. I, I don't like it. Especially with no way to control things. It's bad. Mm-hmm. But also I understand why they want to do it. Give me bottle cap and let's go. Also, the exclusive moves that make it very hard to do unless you get the elite TMs. Mm-hmm. And it's hard to get the elite TMs because you can only get those through Battle League, which we require the elite TM moves to do well in Battle mm-hmm. League. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a it's a very double edged sword in that regard. <laughs> I don't know. I, like that's my issue with competitive Go. I I did hear that there are some rumblings that Pokemon Unite's probably going to get there, but it's going to be an invitational thing. Uh, yeah. Which means Team Puckle won't be able to show up. In their jerseys. Oh, Still better than Pokin. Seth, we'll get you a jersey. Pokin's still there. Yeah. I need to get to level like 14 first. Yeah, we got it. We'll get... Oh, well, I meant for a TCG. I could still get you a jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. TCG. Yeah. Heck yeah. We'll get you a jersey. It'll just say Seth Vilo. <laughs> or, or we'll just make it Heck say Vilo. Yeah. And it'll be very confusing. Front name, Seth. But your name's not either of those things. And that's okay. Not any of them at all. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So go... I don't know. Like... I don't. I don't want to give it like too high of a grade. I'll give it like a B. I was. I was going for a B. I was gonna go for C because I mean I open it every now and again. But man. well, like B, like it did. It's doing solid things. It, it listened. It actually it listened to the community because when they were gonna go like switch all the stop distances back, that fixed the problems with the game to actually make it playable. But it took the entire internet screaming. It did take the entire but internet they screaming. Fixed it. I'm okay with that. Because that's better than the response. That's better than the response when, like, the entire internet was screaming. Well, entire internet in quotes was screaming at like Junichi Masuda, right? About Dexit. Right. I I see both of those very similar. Uh, I see creating drama so you can solve drama to be a good yes. PR stunt. Is, yes. I don't think that's what they did, but I wouldn't rule. I don't it think out. it's what they did. I think they were like, yeah, no, we planned it for a while and we never actually discussed renewing it. And I mean, like their their newsletter that they sent out that's like here's all the that they said they were going to do monthly or whatever it didn't really answer a whole lot of things no I would it give it a passing grade at best like c i wouldn't consider mm. d really passing yeah, I, i'm you know. just happy with the direction of the seasonal model yeah it's like these overarching goals yes the masterworks it's like it's a good event and it's an at-home event that's not asking you to go somewhere yes and i like give that me volcarona please Pokemon Go is its own problem of just like I because Pokemon Go is, has a very hard time innovating. Yeah, and 
I, I like I complain all the time about how I don't want Pokemon to innovate, but Pokemon Go might need to innovate. <laughs> <laughs> Something maybe I don't know. Well, I think I think a game I think a game that I just pay once for probably doesn't need to innovate, but a game that I like have to put more money into or like significant time to do well. A living game. Yeah, a living game per se. I it probably needs to innovate. Like Unite's been transforming itself. Unite's doing a very good job actually. So patching really well. Yeah, I love yeah. it. They're doing like Unite does a very solid job. So I don't know. Uh, overall, I'd give probably 2021 like I'm going to say B, like B, like 2021 gets a yeah, B. Yeah, like it was an anniversary year, like and it's a big anniversary year. It's not like the 30th. Mm-hmm. It's like I don't I don't care about the 30th. I don't know. Like 2022 25. is going to be better because Arceus like we don't get Arceus really in this year. And I think I think Arceus has the potential to really shake things up and do something mm-hmm. interesting with the franchise. Because I think Pokemon can then become a, a second pillar for Nintendo as a franchise, not just being mm-hmm. the game that they go, oh, this is our standard JRPG, but also go, hey, this is also like our Monster Hunter. Yeah. I'm curious what ripples we'll see from Arceus in Gen 9 whenever that comes out. Might be next year. Who knows? It might be I... next year. I don't want to speculate on that. I, I hope it's 2023, but... <laughs> same like i just i just can't believe sword and shield staying the format that's the only thing Un- unless they update it unless they update it that's my only thing even if they updated it's still so long <laughs> you can do things though like and you can do like dex restrictions which i don't know like i feel like the people running bgc just really need somebody to sit down with them and be like this is what you should do <laughs> i don't know but yeah, yeah this is a, this is a good place to stop i think b is good like the, you said b, b is B's good. a good score and everybody's going to love us because the first episode of the year had probably one of the longest topics we'll have all year. So <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. So on that note, we're going to cut it here, guys, and we're going to kick it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. So we'll catch you on the flip flop. Pokemon the episode. And welcome to our Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode is National Dex number 465, Tangrowth, the Vine Pokemon. Its shield entry states, Vine growth is accelerated for Tangrowth living in warm climates. If the vines grow too long, Tangrowth shortens them by tearing parts of them off. (laughs) Yeah, that's a modern day Pokedex entry, of course. Uh, Yeah, modern day Pokedex entries are just like, yeah, Pokemon are terrifying. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So Tangrowth is actually not that, Tangrowth isn't that bad minus its special defense and speed. It's actually really good otherwise. Uh, yeah. unfortunately in BDSP, they don't have Assault Vest. Nope. Correct. Uh, they essentially just took every item that didn't exist before Gen 4 and was just like, yeah, we don't need this. Uh, or exist. You guys can have the Rosalie Berry. We'll be fine. Yes. And there Gen- yes. Yeah. And the Pixie Plate. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's fine. Here you go. These are the things you can have now. And so, I mean, base 100 HP, base 100 attack. I didn't realize it's base 100 attack. Yeah, it's very good. It's the same as Zygarde. Yeah, that's nuts. Um, base 125 defense, base 110 special attack. This thing's massive. Yeah. Uh, the the problem is that it has a base 50 special defense. Okay, guys, it's, it's not doing a lot there, but then also base 50 speed. So it's, it's, it's a slow boy, but he, he's still there. Uh, so I mean, it's it's good Pokemon. The move pool's not bad either. So he's he's a he's a good boy. So we've got a team for you, a VGC team for you to try out on BDSP. And uh, if you're a patron at the ten dollars tier or higher, you can grab this whole team shiny uh, over on Patreon. It'll be a good time. So uh, today we've got Tan Growth uh, holding an Aka Berry. What's it? What does Aka Berry do? I don't actually know. Reduce fire. <laughs> Is that fire? Okay, so if somebody yeah. tries to hit it with a flamethrower, it's like, yeah, maybe I'll survive. <laughs> and it's got the regenerator ability, because why wouldn't it? Uh, it's got 228 HP, 36 defense, and 244 special defense. I am sure that is to hit some kind of calc. With, uh, survive tangle. a fire blast. Survive something a fire like blast that. or something, or a flare blitz, mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, it bold nature, so you can boost that defense even higher. And you're running Sleep Powder, Giga Drain, Rage Powder, and Protect. This tan growth is budget Amoongus because you're playing BDSP and you don't have Amoongus. <laughs> <laughs> Literally all of these Pokemon can uh, almost, uh, most of these Pokemon can be like, yeah, I'm budget this. and <laughs> hmm. Sort of, kind of. Yeah, because we there's been some power creep in Pokemon. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> 
So following that up, it's got its buddy. Uh, if it to switch into uh, Fire Blast instead of Tangrowth taking the Fire Blast to the face, you've got Gastrodon holding a Citrus Berry with Storm Drain. With 204 HP, 80, 188 defense, 60 special attack, 52 special defense, and 4 speed. You know, the standard spread. <laughs> the standard spread. <laughs> it does something, I'm sure. Uh, uh, and uh, Modest Nature. Uh, it's got Ice Beam, Earth Power, Recover, and Yawn. That's actually a pretty standard moveset for Gastrodon right now. Uh, because yeah. you need the Ice Beam. Well, I think if you're playing BDSP OU, that's a standard set. Because you need the Ice Beams to take down the Glyscores. Agreed, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. Yawn's just nice to have because you can, like, force switches, which is always <laughs> nice. And you've got Recover because he's a gastrodon. Don't <laughs> a long time. Do East Sea because West Sea looks like garbage. Yeah, I mean, I don't really care. I don't have a preference. Gastrodons are gastrodons. Yeah. They're all sea slugs to me. They're all sea slugs. All right. I don't know who's got these next ones. I think it's you, Seth. It is me, yes. The next one up is Scizor, holding Metal Coat, because that's hilarious and ironic. <laughs> its ability is, of course, Technician, and the EVs are as follows. 252 HP, 220 attack, 4 defense, 4 special defense, and 28 speed with an adamant nature. And just hit hard and take a couple hits. Move mm -hmm. set is Swords Dance. X scissor, bullet punch, and protect. Interesting scissor. No U-turn, which surprises me. No you don't see it. You don't see it a lot in VGC. To be fair, you don't see scissor a lot in VGC. Yeah, and it can't get bug bite. No, yeah, this is just this is literally just here to bullet punch things in the face. Like that's what that's there for. Yep. That's why it's got the metal coat too. So mm -hmm. yep, that it's gonna sword stance and bullet punch things. Like that is its job. Mm -hmm. The X scissor is there just in case. Yeah. A water type drops in or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And then next up after that is Tyranitar holding a Lumberry. This one's an interesting one. The ability is, of course, Sandstream. EVs are simple. 4 HP, 250, 252 attack, 252 speed with a jolly nature. And moveset of Rock Slide, Crunch, Dragon Dance, and Protect. You are a setup offensive Tyranitar. Mm -hmm. Rock Slides are good. And a burnt rock slide is not good. So I have seen this yeah. spread <laughs> on VGC teams everywhere, actually. Uh, yeah. Just because Tyranitar, good. Tyranitar, stab, good. Uh, Tyranitar, dragon dance. Now, go fast. And, Tyranitar, chonky. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it, this is just a very, this like, I made the joke about standard spread on the Gastrodon. This is very standard Tyranitar. <laughs> Very standard Tyranitar. He, he must dance. <laughs> he want, he wants to dance so he can go fast. Okay? I must dance. And then he's super scary. It's good. <laughs> I mean, this team's a lot of fun because this team's actually, like, really straightforward to run. Yeah. Uh, uh, like it, It's like, here's Tangrowth for redirection, and then everything else just punches real hard. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Minus the minus the Arcanine at the end, but yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. First, we got to go through Raiko with its choice specs, ability inner focus. Hey, we can't get picked out. That's good. Also, Yay. we don't have a choice, so it's fine. We're <laughs> intimidated, I guess. Yeah, you don't have a yeah. choice. You're stuck to hidden abilities right now. Oh yeah, that's right. With the beasts, yeah, it's, you're I forgot about that. I mean, it's fine it's... except for Suicune. Like Suicune cares, but yeah, Suicune cares. Actually, in B doubles, I don't think Suicune cares because uh, fake outs everywhere, and you don't want to be faked out. No, no inner, fo down. inner focus got the best buff ever. <laughs> right, it that really is so did. good now. Entei's better because of it because it can't be intimidated. It's great, right? I I love it in Sword and Shield. V VGC. Yes, but yes, here we have Ranko. Uh and max special attack, max speed, HP, and for the rest, and timid nature because we go fast, boy. Uh, attacks are Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Scald, and Snarl. Because we are that well. That's what Ranko does. That doesn't have many options, but it has no. more than it used to. Yeah. Mm hmm. I, Scald. It, Scald's a good option. Okay, I every Raikou needs to run Scald all the time, every time. It's like budget bolt beam. If we had sword and shield uh, access, maybe or a sphere over snarl. Maybe. Yes. Uh, that's the only thing I think of. Uh because Tyranitars are everywhere and hitting Tyranitar seems decent. Um, and last up we have Arcanine with an Igwa berry. Intimidate is our ability because well yeah, no, that's what we do. I don't think beat up shenanigans are that big here. 
<laughs> and our stat spread. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. We have 244 Standard. HP, 28 attack, 4 defense, 4 special defense, and 228 speed because Standard. Standard. We're we're support. <laughs> we're not we're not here to do damage unless we're gonna kill something like a scissor. Uh we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're jolly... here to blitz scissors and will o wisp everything else. Yeah, we're jolly nature. So I assume we're outspeeding base ninety fives with that spread. Uh like that now? sounds right. Uh like we're missing like five. Is isn't he base ninety five? Yeah. Is maybe nineties. Base nineties, oh, okay. I can see. Base nineties, cool. Uh for some reason I thought he was base one hundred. Or choice scarf scissors. <laughs> Stop. Uh, anyways, Dax, Lair Blitz, Extreme Speed, Will O Wisp Protect. We are Arcanine. We are Arcanine. <laughs> we are Arcanine. Bum 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 bum. Oh my gosh. He's outspeeding Choice Scarf Scissors, though. That's the important thing, okay? It's the important thing. Uh all right. I guess that's the team. I don't know. It's very Woo. it feels it feels very straightforward to run. I mean you have budget and Cinderor Arcanine to come and do intimidate stuff. Gastrodon, or not Gastrodon, uh, Tangrowth is playing the role of uh, Budget Amoongus. Uh, but it, I I don't know. I like Tangrowth. It's a cool Pokemon. I like I like Arcanine better than I like Tang or uh, Incineroar. I like, it, I like seeing Arcanine better more than I like seeing Incineroar. <laughs> These are the important things. I mean, I was getting annoyed with Arcanine before Incineroar. Uh, yeah, it was around, but I don't know. It was never as centralizing as Incineroar. I mean, it was always scary because you never knew if it was going to be the justified set and just beat you, got beat up and killed you. Um, yeah. Well, Arcanine also never knew, like, Arcanine never knew Fake Out, which I think is part of the Incineroar problem. <laughs> fake Out Parting yeah, Shot parting is kind of a it's problem. It's not as supportive. Yeah. It, it's kind of a problem. I mean, Arcanine is, I think, bulkier, maybe. Uh, yeah. But that's about bit. it. Uh, that's about it. So... Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun team. I would definitely go run it. But again, like I said, if you're a patron, you can pick up every single one of these Pokemon uh, over on Patreon. Just look for the post later today on Monday and you should be able to grab them all. On that note, though, I think that's everything for this segment. So we're going to kick things on over to the mailbag. It's mail time. Send in your emails. And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag is the part of the show where you can send us an email at fucklepodcast <laughs> at gmail.com. We typically have a prompt for you. I think last week I asked you guys what you thought of spinoff games, what you think might make a good spinoff game. But also, like, if you have any Pokemon New Year's resolutions, which would probably be similar to what we're going to ask today. But we're going to go ahead and read them. If you, This segment, though, is always brought to you by the Green Tauros Energy Drink. It gives you hooves. 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 And as always, we give out the Green Taurus badge to the best email we get. It has reset on the Discord server, so nobody has the green name right now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you will be the first one of 2022 to get this if you uh, send us an email in. And only two of you did. So, ha! Uh, <laughs> as of recording, anyway. As of recording. I'm going to get emails on Saturday, I guarantee it. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, I guarantee it. Because we, it's the holiday, so we record early. Yeah. All right, so... This first email comes to us from Django. Greetings! Last week's topic of a Pokemon spinoff game was quite intriguing. As someone who dabbles very little in games beyond franchises I know and love, Pokemon, Star Wars, Mario, Zelda, I had to really dig deep in thinking of a Pokemon spinoff game that hadn't already been discussed or done up to this point. I thought to myself, perhaps something akin to Luigi's Mansion where we attempt to vacuum up Gengar, Mischievous, and Ghost Pokemon with a Rotom <laughs> vacuum. Oh my gosh, could you imagine Rotom <laughs> vacuum? That's, oh my gosh, that's yes. The, that's the electric steel type we need, okay? Or electric flying. Electric ghost. He already is electric ghost. It eats the ghosts. It eats the ghosts. Uh, he could be He could be like electric dark, maybe. You know, he could, uh, because he's like sucking up the ghost because he's evil. Maybe Pokemon <laughs> Breath of the Wild that everyone is clamoring for, but definitely not getting in PLA. <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely not getting in Pokemon Legends Arceus. I like this guy. This guy's on my good side. He's got the green Taurus badge in my heart. <laughs> Then I thought back to my gaming habits growing up. I loved sitting with my brother for hours on end playing Star Wars Battlefront 2, 2005. <laughs> That's true. I played that a lot with my brother, too. For those unfamiliar, yeah. Battlefront 2 was a first-person shooter game. It was third-person, Third actually. Third-person, but yeah, th it might have had a first-person first mode. It, I probably I had a first-person mode. I think it had a turn-on, but it. I think it yeah. was default third-person. Yeah, I definitely played third-person. 
Um, I know it sounds pretty ridiculous for a Pokemon game with gunfire, thermal detonators, and force chokes, force chokes, but hear me <laughs> out. If I were to create this game, I would have a story mode where a trainer begins with his or her starter, learns the basic gameplay, and catches more Pokemon that can be used in online battles. At the beginning of each online battle, the player spawns as the Pokemon and tries to take command posts away from the other team, with the ultimate goal of taking control of the map. Upon each respawn, the player can choose a different Pokemon in their arsenal. This is almost Pokemon Unite. This is, like, almost there. Yeah. Beyond ground battles, you could also experience full battles in the sky with dogfighting between flying Pokemon or those with Levitate. Yes, let's bring back sky battles! No, stop! Stop, Sigma! (laughs) Shush! I, for one, would love to zoom across the sky and feel the satisfaction as I take down everyone's beloved, overused, overrated Charizard as my trusty Salamence. (laughs) That's your motivation, really. Uh, That would be my motivation, too. (laughs) Finally, there could be events similar to the Tiny Tourney, where you'd be able to duke it out uh, on the back of a Waylord or something, like our oft-forgotten small bonds. Or as seen in Pokemon Journeys, have a Pelipper drop down to the beginning of each battle and give everyone a random Pokemon to play as. You know what? That's actually a mechanic that they should use in future games for something. I don't know what, Mm -hmm. but they should use it. (laughs) All in all, I'd be able to see, I'd be interested to see one of my favorite game genres, albeit a bit toned down, combined with Pokemon. As for Pokemon New Year's resolutions, I'm planning on reproaching Gen 5s through 7 in in 2022. First got into Pokemon with the debut of Ruby and was hooked for years until I found myself uninspired playing Black and White and put very little playtime in the games afterwards. Hearing whispers of Diamond and Pearl remake along with Pokemon Legends Arceus finally brought me back to the world of Pokemon and prompted me to buy a Switch OLED in anticipation to, and to try out Sword and Shield in the meantime. Switch OLEDs are pretty nice, kind of. I don't know that they're worth the upgrade, but if you didn't have a Switch before, you made the right choice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I'd probably upgrade at some point to one just because I have launch switch still. If you have launch switch, yes, I agree with you. Uh if you have If you don't have launch switch, I think yes. you're probably fine. Yes. I look forward to catching up on everything I missed and getting into competitive battling once more and learning the best here at Puckle. <laughs> Happy New Year's and here's to a twenty twenty two filled with Pokemon Joy. Best Django. Well thank you, Django. We appreciate that. Uh, Switch OLED was the, was a good choice, though. All right, we only have one more today. It's uh, it's gonna be from Andy. Yep, and I've got that one. <clears throat> Hello, distinguished panel of hosts, co-hosts, Green Tauros, and other assorted pokes. That was cute. That is, that, Writing in today, as nice. I have recently started listening to the Puckle podcast, I am a longtime Pokemon fan that recently got back into playing the games. I played Gens 1, 2, 3, and the original Diamond Pearl. I fell out of playing Pokemon games around Gen 5, as I have not played Black, White, XY, Sun, or Moon. I purchased a Switch in early 2021, and purchased Shield as well. I really enjoyed playing Shield, was thoroughly impressed by the graphics, and had a lot of fun exploring the wild area. I purchased Shining Pearl on its release date and have put about 150 hours of playtime as of writing this email. I'm currently working on leveling up my favorite Pokemon so I can rematch the gyms and Elite Four. Wanted to tell you how much I appreciate your podcast, especially the Poke Quiz. I learned so much about the different Pokemon during the quiz and find the answers very interesting. You should check out Puckle Plus. We have a bunch of them there. <laughs> I also find the Poke Quiz very interesting a lot of the times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some of the questions these guys come up with, they're very, uh, very insane. Yeah. Piss and Cure Berry. God, what the heck? <laughs> okay, the Puss and Cure Berry, I knew about, okay? As well as the Pers- I know. Cure Berry, okay? The Ice Berry, I <laughs> probably wouldn't too. have been able to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Also, have a question for you. I apologize if you've discussed this in a previous podcast, ep- podcast episode, but I've only listened to episodes from October 21... 21- November 2021, and December 2021. My question is this. How do you feel about the new design style of Pokemon? In comparing Gen 1 to the current Gen, Pokemon seem to look quite different. I feel that Gen 1 Pokemon had much more detail and sharper edges. Current Gen Pokemon seem to be softer and less defined, if that makes sense. Wondering if you have thoughts on this. Thank you, and looking forward to listening to future episodes. Happy holidays, Andy. We did an episode on designs, I think, once. Whimsicott was on it. I'm sure. Yeah. Because we talked about Ultra V specifically. Yeah, I was going to say, Gen 7 and Gen 8 have really cool designs. Uh, Same with Gen 6, too. Gen 8 broke a lot of rules. Because if you look at Pokemon designs in Gen 8 versus literally every other Gen... Part of this is because James Turner was the the designer instead of Sigamori. Yeah, he does really good. Yeah, and, and they definitely have different styles than they show. Because if you look at Gen 7 Pokemon previous and you leave out the Ultra Beast, th- every Pokemon has like one of three types of eyes. <laughs> mm, yeah. 
That's legitimately a thing. Like they have one of that's what types. I was gonna mention they too. Have, like, yeah, anime was eyes. the eye change. They have anime yeah. eyes, dots, Dragon Ball Z eyes. Yeah, or Dragon Ball Z eyes. Yes, the, those are like the three. The types triangle of with the dot. <laughs> yeah, those are like the three that they have. And so, like, they definitely have changed and evolved over the years. I think part of it is they evolved with the technology because we look at sprites. Yeah. Mm. They have sharper edges by default. Well, okay. So, like, even if you think about just, like, the colorations of Pokemon, a lot of them have become much more complex. I think Gen 8 was actually really good and went back to a simpler color palette. Yeah. Like, Rookie compared yeah, to previous really generations. Like, Gen 7 kind of got busy with colors. And I would say even like Gen 6 was busy with colors, stuff like that. Because if you look at the colors of Pokemon beforehand, and especially when they first got to the color in Gen 2, Gen 2 is so limited in how much like space was left on the game. Every Pokemon <laughs> in Gen 2 has four colors. Every sprite, four colors. Mm. And two of those are probably black and white. I'm, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> like two of them are probably black and white. I, I believe it. That, I, is, I, that, I is how Gen, uh, that is how Gen 2 uh, colored a lot of the Pokemon. And so, I mean, part of it's technology limitations. And I mean, this really shows, I think, when you make that jump to 3D for a lot of Pokemon. When you yeah. make that jump to 3D, you can really see that limitation also take effect. And they just don't pop as much because they weren't designed with 3D in mind. But then you look at something like Rowlet, who, who is designed to, like, turn his head around in the middle of the battle and look at you. Yeah. Like, there's no <laughs> older Pokemon that does that. Or, like, well, Rowlet, yeah. Dragapult yes. with the invisible tail referencing yes. the fossil record. Like... Sent a scorch in general. I I really love the Gen Eight and on Pokemon designs. They are fire, in my opinion. Gen Eight, I would say, is the first generation where I went. The entire generation of Pokemon they've introduced is above average. Like I I cannot think yeah, of I, one I Pokemon that came out of Gen Eight that I'd be like that is a below average design, and I wish it didn't exist. I mean, yeah. I felt the same way about Gen Seven. Uh, well, I think part of it too. is that they're coming out with smaller generations, right? And so that definitely helps. I feel yeah. like maybe regionals helped push them back yes, towards earlier yes, designs. Yes, absolutely. Too. I think they like, had to revisit those and make. Oh, we're redesigning Gen One things. Okay, well, we're learning from redesigning them and getting to put them into other Pokemon. I'd agree that that to a uh, to a lesser extent. But yeah, thank you for that email, Andy. Um, and so we have to give out the Green Taurus badge, and it's the first. It's the first of the year. Let's be generous. I say we give it to both. I like it. So both sure, of you yeah. come to the Discord server, tell us you want it, and you can uh, get the uh, Green Taurus badge. Yeah, it's a lonely Ooh, place yeah, right now, yeah, but it'll you, grow. You guys it'll can grow. talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> talk to each Yay. other. I mean, literally what happened in that chat until very recently was that they just said, kept saying hooves to each other. And that's all that chat is. is I just think they're hooves, saying hooves. hooves, hooves, hooves. <laughs> that is all that. That's is. hilarious. I think they're doing it to say goodbye because yeah, they're, they're going to lose gonna it in a, couple, in, in, in a day, I guess, from now. Uh, so <laughs> hurry up. Go put uh, the, the banner snap. Jeff, yeah. <laughs> <being erased>. uh, <laughs> well, uh, that is it for wow. uh, the podcast today. This first uh, inaugural podcast of 2022. If you want to keep up with Puckle, the best thing to do is come to PuckleDiscord.com where you can come and hang out with us all the time. Just chit and chat and uh, talk Pokemon or even sumo wrestling, I guess, Mark. <laughs> you can also keep up with us on social media over on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, Tumblr. You can, of course... Also, get more Puckly goodness throughout your week on Thursdays by going over to the Puckle Plus feed. Uh, not only do we have this feed, but we also have the Puckle Plus feed. So make sure you check that out. If you're listening to us on YouTube, which some people do, and that's okay. I'm all, I'm all for it. <laughs> Leave a like. <laughs> uh, be sure it's, on the, it's, it's just in the same place on Thursdays as well. Speaking of YouTube, make sure you check it out. We got some content that's going to be going up there in January. By the second week, it should be up there. If not the first week, we're going to have some content rolling out. So be sure to check that out. That's going to be youtube.com slash I think technically C slash Puckle Podcast, but just Puckle Podcast on YouTube. Give us a sub. Give us a give us a watch. Give us a like. All that all that in business. We're also currently still still streaming on Twitch uh, because YouTube has a lot of setup for streaming on YouTube. <laughs> you go and go over to twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast and you can uh, come and hang out with us on live streams. I try to stream on Tuesdays and I'm going to try to do also pick up Thursdays as well this year. So be sure to head on over there. Uh, we also upload those replays to YouTube, speaking of that. so Yeah, as long as there's not copyrighted music. Yeah, which I try not to do. Uh, <laughs> I try not to do. It's yeah. fine at the beginning, but Twitch yeah. mutes the audio, so it just becomes super yep. awkward to repost. So, <laughs> do that. Hey, go watch it. Have fun. And of course, if you want to hang out with us, get free Pokemon and do some other stuff, you can come over to patreon.com slash podcast and join one of those reward tiers, get some extra bonus content. 
it's always a good time. So on that note, I have been Trainer Thatch. I've been R Sigma. And I've been Seth Vila. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time. Yeah.